Now the vision of this church is to see lives changed by the power of God. Um, in my four years being in Cleveland, what I realized is that there's a lot of great churches in the Cleveland area. So we're not called to be just another church because truthfully, Cleveland doesn't need just another church. We're called to be a place where lives are changed, where lives are literally changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. This means that we want to be a church where people go, where drug addicts go and alcoholics go to be free from addiction by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, where addicts and alcoholics become upstanding members of the community holding jobs and taking care of their family. That's what we're called to. And that's where we're going to go. Uh, this church is meant to be a place where prostitutes get free from sexual bondage and become wholesome, loving, and faithful wives. This church is meant to be a place where people are free from the spirit of poverty and where millionaires will come from, come to this church and be a part of this church who was born and raised right here in this area. Now, this church was meant... Uh, to see people totally healed from sickness and disease. People healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I believe that God has his power. I believe that God can do what he says he can do. He can do all things. That's what, what, what we believe. Now, we also believe that this church was meant to see young people healed from mental health issues. Now, you all know that I'm also a teacher in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District at a middle school. And during our final staff meeting, our principal said that was the first time that this school year was the first time in all of her years being a principal, all of her years teaching, that she's seen so many young people with documented, not just act crazy, but with documented mental health issues. Now let me be very clear. The devil is attacking our youth. He's attacking our black communities. He's attacking our finances. He's attacking our health. And we just can't sit around and just take it. We have to fight fire with fire. Now, uh, 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You will receive the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It says how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, doing good things, healing all who was oppressed with the devil, for God was with him. Now Luke 4, 18-19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Um, he has sent me to heal the broken heart and preach deliverance to the captive and receive the sight of, to the blind and set at liberty those who are bruised. Now we are here to be a church where um, we actually have power in our church to change lives, where people can get delivered, where people can get debt free, where people can get revelation from God. Now, that's our church. Our church is exists to see God transform lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I say the Holy Spirit or someone has the Holy Spirit, what do you think of? Just think in your mind, in your heart. What do you think of when I see, say somebody has the Holy Spirit? Alright. A lot of people, when they hear somebody has the Holy Spirit, they think about this video. People jump in around and running up and down. They may feel like um, a preacher coming and laying hands on a person and they just fall out. That's called being slain in the spirit. They may think of Christians speaking in unknown tongues or an unknown language called speaking in tongues. Now many thoughts come to people's heads when they hear the name the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to teach Holy Spirit 101, so everybody knows from the Bible, who is the Holy Spirit? Now, this is the basic teaching of the Holy Spirit, so that we can activate His power in our daily lives. Now, the first thing you have to know about the Holy Spirit, first thing you have to know about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is a person. All right, the Holy Spirit should not be referred to as it. For example, oh yeah, the Holy Spirit, 
I felt it before in church. The Holy Spirit is not an it. That is incorrect. The Holy Spirit is properly referred to as Him. Some people believe that the Holy Spirit is some godly force or energy, just like electricity or something like that. That's actually degrading to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. Some people get confused when I say the Holy Spirit is a person because they automatically think, or when they hear person, they think of humans. Let me clarify, the person is any being with a will, emotions, and an intellect. But before I go into this, I have to, um, I have to break something down to you. And this is really getting into the Bible. Now, there's two realms of life in the universe. There is the physical realm, and then there is the spiritual realm. Now, we operate in the physical realm, obviously, through our five senses. Sight, taste, touch, hearing, smell. If you didn't have your five senses, there would be no way for you to um, maneuver or operate in the physical realm. You operate in the physical realm according to your five senses. And at the same time, we operate in the spiritual realm through revelation. There would be no way for you to know that the spiritual realm exists unless it was revealed to you i.e. the Bible or um, a vision or somebody speaks a word to you. Um, some way for you to acknowledge or be able to operate through the spiritual world is through revelation. It can get even deeper than that. But I'm going to just limit it to how it affects the Holy Spirit. Now, there is a right way and there's a wrong way to operate in the spiritual realm. The right way to interact with the spiritual realm is by faith. Faith is trusting in God regardless of what is going on in the physical realm. Now, sometimes you have to operate in the spiritual realm according to your faith or according to trusting God regardless of what you see or regardless of what you feel or regardless of, of, of what you're hearing. Regardless of what everything is going on in your life um, that uh, regards your five senses, you have to trust in God because sometimes you have to believe in God regardless uh, of what you see. All right? That's how it is. Um, you have to have that revelation, that vision uh, of what's not now but what's going to be, what God is showing you. All right? That's it. Now, Faith is the wrong way to interact. Uh, it's the right way to interact with the spiritual realm. Now, the wrong way to interact with the spiritual realm is through things like witchcraft or fortune telling or idol worship. Now, this is primarily people interacting with demons or spirits that are contrary to God's will. Now, let's go back to the definition of a person. I said a person is any being that has a will, emotions, and intellect. Now, in the physical realm, the only beings that have a will, emotion, and intellect are obviously human beings. But in the spiritual realm, the Holy Spirit has a will, He has emotions, He has an intellect, He is a person. Now, let me just background how the Holy Spirit is a person. He speaks. According to Revelations 2 and 7, the Holy Spirit intercedes or He prays for others. Uh, he prays for us, as a matter of fact. That's Romans 8, 26. The Holy Spirit testifies. That's John 15, 26. Um, the Holy Spirit leads. That's Acts 8, 29. The Holy Spirit, He commands. That's Acts 16, 6 and 7. The Holy Spirit, He guides. John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit, He appoints. I got all these scriptures for you. The Holy Spirit can be lied to. The Holy Spirit can be insulted. The Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. The Holy Spirit can be grieved by our sin. The Holy Spirit is a person. Now, the second thing that we're going to learn in Holy Spirit 101 is that the Holy Spirit is God. Now, there are two places in the Bible where it talks about the Holy Spirit and God being interchangeable terms. In Acts 5, 3 through 4 says, But Peter said to An An Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back some of the prices of the land? You have not lied to men, but you have lied to God. 
First Corinthians six um, three and sixteen says, "Do you not know that you yourselves you yourselves are God's temple?" Then First Corinthians six and nineteen says, "Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit?" They're used in interchangeable terms. The Holy Spirit also has all the attributes of God. The Holy Spirit uh, is eternal, according to Hebrews. 9 and 14. The Holy Spirit is all powerful according to Luke 1 and 35. The Holy Spirit is everywhere present or omnipresent. Um, according to Psalms 139 and 7. The Spirit of God is all knowing according to 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. The Holy Spirit is also called God as we have seen in um, the scriptures that I read. Now, the Holy Spirit is God. The next, I want to briefly talk to you about the Trinity. And we went over this in Bible class. The Trinity is one God who manifests himself or reveals himself in three persons. All right, now, we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God who reveals himself in three persons. Just like how I said in New Members class that um, water can be solid, liquid, and gas. Also, water can be ice, it can be snow, and it can be hail. All simultaneously, three different characteristics of water, all at the same time. Now, according to that, we know if that, that's the case with water, of course, God being all-powerful for our sake, to, to save us, to redeem us, all right, to make, him all, make us all that God wants us to be. God can manifest himself or reveal himself in God the Father, in God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, let me just give you an analogy about TV, and I'm going to be done. All right, take for instance, you have a big screen TV, beautiful TV, all right? Now, the TV itself, imagine that's you, just the monitor, the frame, the TV, that's you, all right? Imagine the plug is Jesus Christ. Imagine the outlet to the plug is um, is God. And imagine the cable box is the Holy Spirit. All right, now take for instance. This is what this is what's going on. All right, according to Jesus Christ, connects us to God. He's our way to get to God. He's our way to the power source. Now, some of us uh, have Jesus Christ. We have the plug in us. We're connected to the power source, but for some reason or another, we have not turned on the TV. All right? We have not turned on the TV. We have not turned on that power to get all of those wonderful channels, the TV that we have. All right? Now, you can have a plug. You can have power. You can have a TV. But what's good is it is you never turn it on. And some people have been going through their lives. They believe in God. They accepted God. They believe in Jesus Christ. They accepted Jesus Christ. But what they have not done is they haven't turned on the power of the Holy Spirit or activated the power of the Holy Spirit in their daily lives. They haven't activated that healing power of the Holy Spirit. They haven't activated that debt-free power of the Holy Spirit. They haven't activated that power of the Holy Spirit to help transform their lives and the lives of their family. They haven't activated that power of the Holy Spirit. And it's time for us to turn on the TV. Be open to receive all that God has for us. All of the spiritual gifts that God has for us to really um, do what God wants us to do now. With TVs, if you know anything about TVs, there's something called a converter box. All right, and say for instance you had an old analog TV or the TV with um, the the wire, the um, I don't even know what they are called anymore. Antennas, the TV with the antennas. I imagine you have one of those. Now they wiped out all TVs with antennas now. So if you put an antenna on your TV, you're not going to get any channels. But what they had was a converter box. And a converter box you get for, from the government for free. And the government will give you a converter box and you can turn on your TV and get a couple of channels. All right. And you can get those for free. And that's the same thing that happens when you get saved. All right. God will give you the Holy Spirit and he'll give you like a converter box type of system of the Holy Spirit where you get a couple of 
uh, uh, channels of the Holy Spirit. You can fill up. Maybe you can get sanctified. Maybe you can become a better person. He'll give you that uh, converter box, Holy Spirit, for free. But it's all up to us to get, uh, to, to clear ourselves, open our hearts, to receive that high definition, a thousand channel version of the Holy Spirit, that cable box version of the Holy Spirit. So when we turn it on, we can really have the gift of God in our lives. We can really change lives. We can really do all that God wants us to do. Now, I really believe that this is what we need to do in this church. We really need to be open, more open to the power of God. Now, the kingdom of God isn't about word only, but it's about power. We really have to have the power of God in our lives to be able to speak words of encouragement, to be able to pray for people and get results, to be able to lift up each other and encourage each other, to be able to go out there and see people saved, to be able to see people get off drugs, alcohol, addictions, to be able to get ahead in life. This is what we truly are, are needing. Now, I'm coming with a different type of message. Normally, I try to come, make you all laugh, try to uh, keep you all awake and everything like that. And I'm going to keep on, and I promise you, every week, I'm going to have messages. I don't care if you didn't get any sleep when you come here. It's going to be messages that's going to be on point. You know, going to be something that's going to really, that God is going to use to affect your lives. All right. Now, I'm also going to promise you that I'm going to be out in this community outreaching. I have about 3,000 flyers at home. And I promise you before the summer is over, I'm going to personally hand deliver 3,000 flyers to somebody out there, on the, out there in this community. Now, I'm also going to promise you that all of the little glitches and stuff that happened in this church uh, today, that that won't happen anymore, that we're going to be on point. I have more time to get with Latif, get with Janae, get with my wife, anybody else who participated in the service to make sure everything that we do is done with excellence because that's the vision of our ministry. You know, I promise you that we're going to see this ministry grow if you stick with us. Starting this summer, this ministry is going to grow extensively. But it's going to take us having or being open to having a greater level of power in our lives. Because us just having another great church service, there's plenty of churches in Cleveland already doing that. We have to have something more than that. We have to have the true power of God in our lives to really affect what we're doing. Now, that's my message, and I'm kind of glad that we didn't have any visitors today. This will probably be the only day that I'll be glad that we don't have any visitors, but I really have to talk to the people who's been committed to this ministry today. You know, I want you to really truly open your, your hearts and your minds up to giving yourself to God, giving yourself to God, making God and his power a priority in your life, doing more for him, you know, being more passionate for him. All right. And loving him with all of your heart. All right. Let, let's really let's really open our hearts up to God today. And we're going to pray. Everybody bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask for the presence of of your Holy Spirit just to come here right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Father, that the power of your Holy Spirit comes down here right now. I just ask you, Father, to take away any skeptical or any cynical attitude to your power, uh, to the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just, and I just want to say as I pray that, you know, that speaking in tongues and running around and everything like that, some people who are you know, have a who are more emotional, are more susceptible to a greater level of emotions. When they hear, feel that power of the Holy Spirit, they probably they may react to the Holy Spirit in a more emotional way. That that um, you know, that that takes away a 
from what you may think it is um, proper in the church. But at the same time, we cannot hinder the Holy Spirit by a skeptical, by a cynical, by an ignorant attitude. We have to truly be open to the Holy Spirit's power to change our lives and to change the lives of the people that are around us. Why are you at where you're at? Why are you in that classroom? Why are you at that job? Why are you around those people? Why are you there? Have you ever thought what type of difference does God want you to make in that place, in that environment, among your family members, among the people that you're around? God wants to make a difference in your lives. Did you ever wonder why it's just however many of us I can count um, nine people I think including myself while you're in this church when there's hundreds of churches that you can go to or there's a bed at home that you can be sleeping it's a reason for it and the Holy Spirit wants you to be open and, and to what he wants to do in your life to the power of God and I just want you to drop that attitude and be a clean slate I know that um, some of you may have grown up or um, had a, you know, kind of religious background where you were um, trained under one philosophy, maybe more traditional or more this or more that. And this may be new to you, but it's in the word. I'm not going to give you anything that's not in the Word of God. And if you believe in the Word of God, it's true. Do not hold back the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to use you, to lead you, to guide you, to command you, to do His will. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that the presence of your Holy Spirit, that the power of your Holy Spirit comes over this church. I just pray right now for a breakthrough in this community, a breakthrough in the lives of the people sitting here. I just pray against a cynical, skeptical attitude for, that will keep people from locking your hands. We're gonna get off. off we're gonna get off of that analog version. You wiped out that analog version of the Holy Spirit. You gave us for free that converter box version of the Holy Spirit. But it's time for us to truly pay the price to receive. Pay that bill to receive. That, that a high definition cable version of the Holy Spirit that can really uh, make a change and a difference. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Father, that you really, truly deal with the people in this church this week. That we all go to another level. In prayer, all go to another level in outreach. We all go to another level in worship. We all go to another level in our education or reading the Bible, reading your word. We all go to another level in building relationships and love and caring. That we really truly are led by your Holy Spirit. I just want everybody just to really... Praise God and worship God. The Holy Spirit is here. The presence of God is here right now. What are you going to do with it? Some of you need to make dedications and commitments and rededications to God right now. Some of you, God has been speaking to you, but you've been shutting your ears because of whatever reason. Some of you, God needs to really deal with you. You know, we'll get back to those messages that are fun and entertaining, but right now we need the power. We don't need entertainment, we need power. And I just want all of you just to take a moment, just to speak to the Holy Spirit of God and tell Him what your desire, or what, uh, tell Him and ask Him what His desire is for your life and what you need from Him. To help you get to that next level. Just let's really take a minute to really praise and worship God today. And listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying with, with us. Stop blocking Him. Stop being afraid of what He'll tell you to do.
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you.